up everybody? So we're back out in the shop with another Shop Talk Tuesday and in this episode we are focusing on the bevels for the Farrier's Rasp knife that we're working on right now. So what I'm going to try and do with this is break down the process of putting bevels into something that is so heavily textured like this is. So we've got all of the the triangles on this side, all of the lines on this side, what that ends up doing is leaving a bunch of little indentions all the way down the edge here, which really aren't going to matter when it's all said and done because when we start bringing that, the bevels into the cutting edge, we're going to get rid of all those little notches. But what ends up happening is whenever you go to start trying to mark your center line for this, you can't use your calipers to run down this so you've got to do something a little bit different I'm gonna end up showing y'all that here in just a minute but we've got a few things that we need to think about here where do we want our cutting edge how high do we want our bevels to come up to where we still end up with a lot of the character showing on this so how far do you bring your bevels up where do you want to put everything so that everything that makes this a farrier's rasp knife shows. So we're going to focus on that and all we're going to do is we're going to hop over to the workbench. We're going to start pointing out all these different things and start laying out where we want everything to go before we get on the 2x72 and start grinding this stuff out. So let's hop over here and let's get into this. So on a knife like this that has all of this texture on the side, it really hinders you trying to use your calipers to scribe that center edge there because you just start going down inside all of those and it doesn't leave you a nice crisp line. So instead of using these, we are going to use a scribe. Now of course, you can go ahead and use a drill bit if you want to, but I lucked out this is actually going to get pretty centered on this and leave me a nice easy to see line. But what we need to do first, we need to get our sharpie and just mark our edge let that dry for a second and then we just take what we're going to use to scribe and just go down the edge So once we get one line on there, we need to flip it. Then go ahead and get our second line on there. And that's going to leave us with our scribed center line. So that's where our cutting edge is going to be. We got two lines here, which is perfect because this is going to leave a little bit of meat on the bone for whenever it comes time to heat treat. So we're just going to end up grinding to that line and that's going to define our cutting edge. And I'll show you more about that here in just a little bit. Now, now that we have this marked, what we need to go ahead and do is kind of figure out where we want our plunge line to be and our bevels. Now for this particular build, what I want to do is just a nice simple angled plunge line and then just a little bit of flats. There's going to be a lot of texture left on this because of how deep it is. So we can actually bring the bevels up pretty high. We're not going to go too aggressive with it. We're not going to make it to where it's a full flat grind. We are going to leave a little bit of flats, but we are going to bring them up quite a bit right here because this area is pretty shallow. We're going to bring it up, we're going to leave a little bit of flats and call it good there, but let's go ahead and mark this off. Okay. Now, I've got this marked for about right here. Some people might be looking at this going, well, why don't you just bring it to where the flats mimic the recurve and everything? Well, I want this area to be nice and thinned out 
So I'm going to bring the bevels up pretty high throughout the belly of this. And what I find with that is it makes it to where this area is nice and fast. And I know some of y'all might be thinking, how is the knife fast? Well, what you want to be able to do is remove a lot of the heft from here. This is already going to be forward heavy, but I want to take and thin this out a little bit so that whenever we're having to go through and chop something, we can easily have a quick rebound. We don't want it to be so heavy on the front that when we go and we chop, it wants to just keep pushing forward through it and then you have to really fight it to come back. You want to be able to go in, out, in, out. So that's what's making it fast. You're not having to react as much. So we're going to end up bringing that up, just having a nice shallow set of flats on here. And you might be wondering, okay, Eric, how do you replicate this? Well, it's pretty simple. Whenever we do our plunge line jig on here, we can end up tightening this down right there where that plunge line is right there and then we can take reverse it to the other side and just come straight up and that's gonna follow that so now we have our plunge line matching on both sides then all you gotta do is make a couple of reference points so on the other side right at the top of the plunge line measure that transfer it over come down a little bit it's actually pretty even all the way down to about right here so we can bring this right about there cross over the top here so that I know exactly where the flats end and then I've got a nice easy curve so I'm just gonna bring that back so that I have my line right there and right there it's not very hard to go through and make match and then what ends up happening is whenever we start grinding everything in what I'll do whenever I start grinding everything is I'll be going through and checking to make sure that all of these are even as I go through and I grind that way we have nice uniform bevels on either sides and nice uniform transitions so that's going to be or where our bevels are going to be where our flats are going to be our cutting edge now what we need to do put our plunge line jig on here and then go over to the 2x72 and set our cutting edge so now that we have everything marked on here we've got our center edge marked that we scrubbed into there we've got our rough bevel height marked now we need to go ahead and grind in a 45 degree angle all the way down the cutting edge on both sides so that we can actually define the actual cutting edge and make sure it's centered in there and once we get that done then we can start bringing our bevels up higher to get as high as we want them to go but for right now we need to grind in that 45 so that we can move into the next step and what I'm using here is a used 36 grit belt. You don't want to use a brand new one of these on this because you'll end up just shaving a bunch of that grit off by going against that 90 degree angle right there. So use a used belt to start this off.
now that we have our 45 degree angle put on both sides and we've got our center edge defined we need to go ahead and finish out our bevels so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break this line right here I'm going to be coming in and grinding on this line where the bevels meet these flats and I'm just gonna slowly bring this in until I get to the edge and bring the bevels up higher as we go. So I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna break that 45 and then I'm gonna start working it back and forth and getting my bevels brought up. Now with recurve like this you're not just gonna be bringing it straight across you're going to be kinda of coming back a little bit and then bring it out to you. Kind of dipping back a little bit and then bring it back. So we're dipping back and then bring it to you by the time it's all said and done. Now this is really exaggerated. I'm not going this crazy, but I am going to be kind of slightly bringing it back and then bringing it flat and then coming up to the tip and pulling it to me. So that's the process there. Okay, so where we're at right now, we've got our bevels brought up. If you see here, we do have a, let's see if I can get it to show up. We've got a straight line right here. You see our line goes straight and then swoops up, but this just keeps going straight. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna focus just on the tip here and to bring up this area to sweep up like that I'm going to be coming to the end here and I'm going to be really digging in on the spine here so I'm going to be putting more pressure towards the spine than anywhere else and I'm going to be kind of rocking it back and forth to be able to bring this little line right here back and make it sweep up and that's going to flatten all this out a lot right here to be able to bring this bevel up higher but just focus on this section so you'll see that as I'm doing this Now you can see 
that that line no longer just goes straight out into the tip here. Now everything follows that original line that we had there. And now we've got this nice flat section throughout here. But like I said, it's going to make this a lot faster because we're taking a lot of that weight that would typically be right here with such a thick piece of steel and taking some of that out so we got a nice rebound to be able to pull back. But this is going to be our preheat treat bevel height. I'm going to go ahead and do the other side off camera and then we'll talk about this in just a second here. Well, let's go ahead and wrap this one up right here. Give you a little close up. So that's where we're at so far. Just some nice clean bevels. I really love Ferris Rast knives because you get this cool texture that's unique on either side. And of course, I love this profile. I'm a, I'm a drop point recurve guy. That is, that is my favorite style of blade. If I was to choose something to just have with me, it, it's going to be a drop point recurve knife. It just really is. That's my favorite thing. It just does everything that you need it to do. And this is very comfortable in the hand. It's going to be even awesome whenever it has handle scales on it. But I want to talk to you all for a second about the prep that I do going into heat treat. So. You know, we do grind in our bevels with a 36 grit belt. Could I go up higher than that pre-heat treat? Yes, but I don't. I'll do a 36 grit belt and then I'll do a medium scotch bright belt. And that's it. That's the pre-heat treat process of grinding and all that. The reason behind that is I plan on doing a lot more grinding after the heat treat process. So if I went to a higher finish on this, it would be useless. That's gonna get ground off afterwards. So I only do 36 grit scotch Brite belt, and that is the finish before heat treat. After heat treat, I'll take it up to whatever finish I want, but that's really all you need on this. And when it comes to the thickness of some of these, if it's gonna be a really long knife, I'm gonna leave a little bit more meat on the bone than if it's a smaller one. If it's a smaller knife, I can grind it pretty thin because you're gonna have less length to worry about warping. Something like this, where it's pretty long, I wanna make sure that I leave it just a little bit thicker. You know, I've still got a thicker spine here. I've got a thicker edge. My edge is about the thickness of a, in between a nickel and a penny. It's probably closer to a nickel. <laughs> uh, I leave it that thick so that two things, we have a little bit less risk of warping and I can grind through the decarb layer. You're always going to have a little bit of a decarb layer uh, whenever you're, you know, heat treating in a, an open forge like I do and quenching it in oil. So you're going to have that happen and I want to be able to grind through that to make sure we have a nice hard blade without any of the soft area where the decarb is. But that is where we're at so far in the next shop talk tuesday episode we are going to heat treat this so we're going to break down the process of heat treating but when it comes to this video that's the end of this one hopefully this was helpful for y'all if it was let me know in the comment section thank y'all for coming by if y'all would give this video a thumbs up share this video or one of my other videos if you haven't yet make sure you subscribe to the channel y'all have an amazing day y'all stay safe out there Catch y'all next time.